Hey guys, welcome back. It's now time to complete the Rocket Craft Delta III. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. Before getting started with our project here, I wanted to share a couple of pictures with you. Uh, last month when I was at ValleyCon, I ran across a friend of mine who happened to be there with his teenage son, Jake. And as we were talking, Jake had mentioned he was interested in getting started with the hobby by building an SR-71 plane. Well, it so happened I had an SR-71 kit in my stash that I knew I never was going to get to. And uh, I told him I would send him the model as long as he had agreed to uh, send me some pictures after it was done. So as I was digging out the model, I came across also a space plane from 2001. One. It's an old model kit of it, and I knew I was not going to get to either of these models, so I, I sent them both to him, and here are the completed models. So first of all, this is the SR-71 built by Jake. Did a beautiful job with it, and it so happened his sister wanted to try the hobby out too, so she built the space plane from 2001. Also turned out great. Well, they both did such a fantastic job, and it was really nice seeing them build these uh, model kits. I know many of us are always talking about how we'd love to see younger people get into the hobby, so feel free to leave them a comment or two here on the YouTube channel. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to begin by finishing up with the cabin. So this is the cabin now, and the way this has to work is I have to first attach the flooring to this bottom piece, and uh, then I'll attach the LED here now. Uh, which will mount right here. As you can see, it looks a little ripply there, and that's because I've used the fabric paint to light block, and then I painted the rest of the exterior black. I chose black because I thought that would be the best with concealing the wires that have to feed down this way. So the SMD being installed here is one from modeltrainsoftware.com. It is a flashing red SMD. And uh, I glued it to the side of the cabin, down through this notch that I cut, which allowed the wire to be fed through the bottom section beneath the flooring. Well, I was ready to put the cockpit together, but I almost forgot about this one part. Uh, that's this piece right here. Uh, this is supposed to hook into the contraption that allows the unit to walk, so since we're not installing that, I have to figure out a different way to mount it. So I just used a piece of styrene that I drilled a hole in to accommodate the base, and um, this has to glue into this section right here, and then I have to assemble uh, these two pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and paint these up so we can get that put together, and then we will glue the top half to the bottom half. So first, I used Tester's model cement to glue the two halves together. While this was drying, I decided to apply some pinstriping to the small tank that goes into the cabin. I felt this was the best way to get some straight black lines. Now, because this was a heavy seam, I decided to also apply Plastruck welding solution to help join the seam together. This was then followed by stuffing the cabin with torn tissue. I felt this would make it easier to mask the cabin off and also protect the interior from the tape's adhesive. Then it was time to apply putty. So as usual, I took masking tape and laid down some strips along each side of the seam just to keep it nice and neat. And here I'm applying my favorite go-to for these types of seams, Squadron Products White Putty. Now finally the sanding, starting with 400 grit and moving up to 1000. Uh, I then primed with Duplicolor Filler Primer before spraying on Tamiya White. So finished up the landing gear by painting it with uh, Vallejo Silver. The wires will then feed through the leg of the landing gear, down through the foot pad, and finally connecting to the power source, which will be in the display base. Okay, just to catch you up here now, I've got the uh seam addressed along the sides, which I think turned out pretty well. I have the uh, little siren attached to the top here, and I also did a little bit of light blocking by adding some styrene plastic along the bottom uh, because there are some open areas where the LEDs are shining through, and I didn't want a bunch of light glowing uh, because remember there are these big gaps here. And uh, so I thought that would look awkward, so I, I just cut some styrene pieces to fit in there and then I painted them black. Um, and then what I'm going to do next now is lengthen these here with the wires that will feed through to the legs. And then we just got to figure out what I'm going to do with these gaps here. Okay, well the ship is pretty much completed here now, and then we've got to work on the bottom section. And as you can see, the wires now are feeding through the back leg. Now what I'm going to do is add a connector here that will 
uh, be able to plug and unplug into our light source. Uh, this will again feed through the display. The light source will be in, to, in the display. Uh, but I figured this would be a good way to be able to uh, take the model off and put back on a display so I won't have to, um, I'll be able to put this on my shelf a lot easier. The display is going to be a fairly good size. And hopefully this will make it easier to transport to a model show. All right, let's talk about the bottom section here because I've definitely made some uh, decisions about this. First, let me refer you back to the box art. So, as I've mentioned before, this is different from our ship. Uh, the model that we have is a ship that is designed to walk, right? Remember, there's a mechanism inside and the ship's supposed to walk quite inefficiently, if I may add, across the surface. What we have here is not the same thing. We've got a ship that takes off vertically and kind of skims across the surface, and this is what we're converting our ship to. So that means we have to add this vertical uh, takeoff engine. And then we have to think about something for lateral movement. So I was going over some ideas with my friend Mark Fraley, and he suggested using the space shuttle as inspiration. And uh, what he was alluding to are the steering jets that the space shuttle has. Uh, and that's what these represent here. So what I did was I took my Tamiya drill, started off with making a small hole, and then making it larger with my Dremel, and then fitting this tubing that I had on hand. And then I eventually painted the tubing black because this entire area here is going to be black. This entire section is going to be black. And it's always tough to get paint inside those tubes there. So uh, they're now in place. And then for the vertical takeoff engine, we're using this piece here to represent the exhaust port. It's something I happen to have on hand. Don't ask me where it goes to because I don't know. Uh, but uh, it's just happened to be in my, my uh, parts drawer. And then you see now some panels that have been cut here. Uh, initially, I was going to put one over this, but I think I'm just going to install this uh, just like that. So for these panels here, what I've done is I've cut four styrene panels to fit inside each of these sections. They will rest up against the tubing that is there. And we will create these panels now that will be detailed so that these open areas will take advantage of now versus trying to cover up. I initially thought about maybe taking styrene and form fitting it, but um, because it curves the way that it does, it was a little difficult to kind of make it conform that way. So instead, We'll have these panels that you'll see detailed as you look through these openings, uh, and so we'll take advantage of these open panels to add more detail to our model kit. All right, so here's one panel completed, and you can see what I mean now, being able to see this detailing through the open section. So I know you've seen me do this type of detailing before, but let me just go ahead and show you with the next panel how I go about this. So as I do this, I don't really have any particular design in mind. Um, so I just start off, I'm gonna start off with this half tube here, or this half rod, and uh, let's just go um, the length of the piece. So we're going to go from one side to the next. We'll go ahead and snip that. These things are very easy to work with. And um, so now that we have that piece, I'm going to go ahead and glue it on. And I just use uh, regular uh, tester cement for this. I'm going to go from one end to the other. I'm going to divide this in half, just like that. And this uh, attaches fairly quickly, even with just tester's glue, because it's styrene. So next we're gonna use one of these rods, and this is basically square, it's just very thin. You can see it's very pliable. And uh, why don't we just make a set of three going like this? What I like to do is have a little bit of cement on a piece of glass. The cement comes off the glass by just using alcohol later. And that way we can just dip our pieces in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and line them up about right here. And then I would allow these to dry, and then you can just use your X-Acto knife to snip these extras down here. All right, so while these are drying, what I'm going to do next is take a slice of this rod. And just like you would be slicing bread, basically just take a very thin slice to create a round piece like that. So this is how it kind of goes. I just, uh, you know randomly we'll start cutting pieces and doing things like uh, let's go ahead and next and cut a piece off this strip of styrene we have a rectangular piece here now and just create shapes and odds and ends that you can just piece together and sometimes it gets stuck right there but let's say we'll put this right here okay next i'm going to go ahead and take one of these rods here and uh, we're going to make a bent pipe kind of like this here so these are easy to work with. You just uh, you just bend it, and you bend it enough to where it starts to take on that shape. If you bend it enough, it'll eventually crack. But just bend it like that, here to here. So we're going to trim it about right here.
Okay, and here you go. So again, I'm not too worried about the excess glue that you see around here because we're going to prime this over and it'll cover most of that. This is also going to be recessed in the model, so you're not really going to see that. And uh, so you don't want to overdo it. Um, I could probably add a little bit more here, but uh, I always keep the other one handy that I just did so we can kind of match the design. All right, so this is the bottom section completed now, and the detail panels were painted with Vallejo's gunmetal and a metallic blue. And you can also see that I mounted the exhaust port for the main engine. Now, there was a hole that I was going to cover with the exhaust port, but I decided uh, to move it back because it looked more centered there. So that's why you see that added panel, and that was created just to cover that hole that was still there. And I added a little detailing to it as well. I decided to paint the bottom section black as a further nod to the space shuttle. And you can see I achieved the look that I was after, being able to see this detailing through the open sections. Uh, one last modification I do want to add to the ship are these holders for the tanks. Because without them, it looks like the tanks are just floating there. And uh, it certainly makes sense to have some sort of support for those tanks. So what I'm going to try to do is create um, those holders um, by using styrene pieces of plastic. And essentially the idea is to curve them with hot water and uh, shape them so that they will curve around the tanks. So hopefully that'll work. We'll give this a shot. <laughs> that effort paid off. Uh, these are the pieces now that will attach to our tanks right about here and uh, it'll look like those supports that we see in the picture. Okay well I'm very pleased with the way the ship is turning out and I'm gonna set that aside now as we move on to display. I'm going to hold you guys a little bit of suspense there until the final reveal to show you how the ship came together. Now for the display as we keep on track here with the Major Matt Mason theme, uh, there was this puzzle that I had as a kid that I would put together over and over again and I remember them working on this big, I don't know if it was a telescope, it looked like a laser gun to me, here's a picture of it. I'm going to keep with that sort of uh, idea here and construct a laser turret. And so what I have here are some pieces, let me show you what I've put together from my parts drawer. These are the pieces here that include a uh, half of a roll of a toilet paper holder. We've got uh, tubes and pieces of styrene from Evergreen Scale Models. I've already cut and trimmed for our turret. Uh, this uh, dish here, or this piece, I can't remember where this is from, but it's going to function great as a dish here for our laser. It's going to slide into it like that. And then we've got this uh, for the base of these tubes that will sit right here. So I believe this part was from the Polar Lights Jupiter 2 model. It was supposed to be the elevator, I think, and not a very good representation of it either. Anyway, it always looked interesting to me, so I never threw it out. And, um, and this is from the Hasbro toy conversion I did of the Millennium Falcon years ago. Uh, just sitting in my parts drawer, it's going to function as our base. So the idea is uh, we'll drill a hole here um, so that we can mount this into place. I've already constructed these supports for our laser turret and drilled a hole to accommodate this for uh, an axle that will allow the laser turret to tilt up and down. We also have this astronaut, which I'm not sure where this is from, but he's about the same scale as the astronaut that sits in our ship. So um, we're going to go ahead and paint him in the Major Matt Mason colors also. All right, let's go ahead and push ahead now with the construction of our laser turret. I found another piece. Uh, this is uh, leftover panels from my BB-8 model. It came with extra panels and um, so this actually will work perfect as an added base here or added support for our laser turret. It's just going to rest on there and um, this then will rest on top of that. Alright, so this is the laser now assembled. You can see here I am putting on some uh, extras on the side supports 
And um, one decision I've made is to do away with this. I think with this on there, it just makes it too high and it doesn't seem like it went with anything. So I'm actually gonna do away with that. We've got this piece here, which could actually be a platform for this piece, which will open up this hole here to accommodate this and then the laser will just go on top of that. And I think that'll work out pretty well. Uh, I happen to have a control panel that we can add to our little base here. Uh, this is also from a Lost in Space uh, Jupiter 2 model. This was the uh, a panel that went to the lower level of the ship, which again I did not build out. So that'll work real well for as a control panel. All right, so this is the way the laser ended up looking. Very pleased with how everything turned out. I'm also happy that I got rid of that Millennium Falcon cockpit. This works much better. Everything looks a bit more seamless here. I decided just to uh, paint the very top portion of this um, area here with a, a gunmetal color. Um, so that way it looks like it's separate from the base here. And uh, yeah, it worked out really well. Now I did decide to add some lighting to the panel. Let me turn this off so you can kind of see it and I'll zoom in for you there. So I did not intend to do this at the beginning, but after I set the ship next to this with the ship having all its lights blinking and everything, this looked a bit plain. So I decided just to add a couple lights here. This is just a blinking SMD, much like we used in the ship. And then I just have a, a yellow glowing SMD, which actually looks like it flashes on and off because we're getting some uh, secondary illumination from the one that's flashing. So I want to make sure that the pieces are detachable from the base. I don't want everything glued to the base. And so this is um, self-contained and that we have a small watch battery at the bottom here with a switch so that we can set this down and turn it on and off. I'm also working on the figure now. I decided to paint him with the blue uh, spacesuit. Now the one thing about this figure is that it, it, its face is open and so I decided to try to uh, fill in the face with an epoxy to create a face shield. It's not as round as a face shield should be, but it at least puts a barrier over his face. And I'll paint this with Tamiya's clear yellow once this is completely dry. So um, he's just going to be positioned next to the laser as he's doing some repairs there. And I think it'll work out pretty well. So the last phase now is to go ahead and work on the display base itself. Let's go ahead and get that done. All right, well, based on circumstances that it's a bit difficult to get out and about right now, I'm just making do with what I have. I happen to have this piece of wood here that will suit our purposes, proper thickness. Uh, sides were kind of chewed up and stuff, but I just used my Dremel to smooth them out, so I think it'll work out fine. Uh, what we've got is some foam, packing foam, that's glued into place now for our rock formations. And the idea is to have the turret on this side with the lander right about here. All right, so here we now have our lunar surface, and I'm sorry I meant to record more footage as I went along here, but uh, what you see here is footage of me getting started. Uh, this was just done again with plaster of Paris, and uh, here I am starting to mix the plaster and applying it onto the styrofoam there for the rocks. And uh, eventually what I did was I uh, applied a thin layer of plaster. Let me go ahead and turn this light off here to show you the textured surface I ended up with. And uh, so I applied this thin layer, and while it was still wet, I took a spoon and allowed it to drip onto the surface with more plaster, and we ended up with these different patterns. So as I mentioned earlier, I did not want the model to be permanently attached to the base. And in order to account for this, I drilled a hole into the base here in the corner. And this will allow me to slip the wires through, and I am using this connector that I found at modeltrainsoftware.com that will allow me to easily unplug and plug the model into its power source. Now, eventually what I'll do is I'll uh, lay down some PVA glue and sprinkle on some cement. That's uh, a suggestion someone gave me to mimic the powdery surface of the moon. But uh, since it's a little difficult to get around right now, I'm going to go ahead and just paint this up and wrap up the project. So I'm going to go ahead and use Tester's Ghost Gray uh, for the main color and uh, do some shading here with some darker shades of gray. So I will complete that and show you the finished project in just a second. All right, everyone. So here we now have the completed Rocket Craft Delta III, a 124 scale model kit by Nito. The model kit measures about six and a half inches in length and six inches high. So overall, the model is a pretty simple build and it is something that isn't very sophisticated looking. Uh, the model comes with a mechanism which, when installed, allows the model to walk. However, in order to allow for all the changes and modifications I wanted to make, I had to leave that part out. Now, as I mentioned in part one, the model reminded me of the retro styling scene in concept art from the 60s and 70s, and it also brought to mind the action figure I played with as a child called Major Matt Mason. 
It's because of this that I chose my modifications and the design of the diorama to be centered around that theme. So let's take a look at the craft itself. It is a small one-man vehicle meant to skim over planet surface, or in this case, the moon. The interior is pretty simple and did not come with any decals, so I detailed it with my own decals, which I created on Photoshop and printed them on vinyl adhesive paper. The vinyl worked out really well. I was very happy with the way it all turned out because it helped out with lighting. Uh, by doubling them up, I was able to effectively light block for a nice illumination of the screens seen in all the control panels. All the lights here are provided by SMDs, which are a great help when it comes to these small kits. A couple other modifications I decided to make were these tank supports, which are seen in the box art but missing from the kit. And to give the windshield a more finished look, I used black pinstriping tape along the edges. The model kit did come with a decal sheet, which even though it was old, I was still able to successfully use. The only trick was that I had to give the decals extra time in the water in order for them to properly separate from the paper. The decal sheet came with quite a few decals, and I ended up not using most of them. By having so many, however, it gave you quite a few options on how to arrange them on the surface of the model. There was no guidance provided in the instruction sheet, so I just ended up placing them where I thought they looked best. Taking a look at the diorama now, it was inspired by a puzzle that I used to piece together as a kid. Uh, the scene here is of the lander arriving to check on an astronaut who is making repairs to a laser turret. The scratch-built laser was also inspired by the retro design from the 60s and 70s. Its influences come from Major Matt Mason, Johnny Quest, and Space 1999 as well. So lastly, the astronaut figure is something that I happen to have in my parts drawer. I painted him with the blue suit that was seen with the Jeff Long action figure from the Major Matt Mason line. The one in the craft was fashioned after Sergeant Storm. Well, that is a wrap for now, and I hope you guys enjoyed following along as much as I enjoyed putting the project together. This uh, gave me the chance to scratch build again, which I always enjoy doing. Uh, I just love the challenge of coming up with these ideas and to see if they actually work. Uh, this also gave us a chance to reminisce about Major Matt Mason. I heard from a lot of you guys on Facebook. We all seem to share the same fond memories of that action figure. For me in particular, uh, you know, it certainly helped to establish a foundation uh, for a lifelong love of sci-fi. So um, as I wrap up here, I want to wish you guys all the best and that you're staying healthy out there. Um, I know many of us are still stuck at home, so I'm going to try and break the monotony a little bit by maybe adding a little bit more content for the channel here. I have a few ideas, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you have any questions about this one, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at intercertomodeler at gmail.com. Take care, you guys. Stay safe and healthy.